Okay, so for scenario three, we're going to go ahead and pick two names out of the bowl. One person will be the handler and one person will be the skill spotter. So we have Bill. All right, Bill. Good. Thanks. <laughs> and we have Jane. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> and then I will need two other volunteers to be our clients with healthcare equipment. Who would like to volunteer? Thank you, Vu. <laughs> Thanks, right. Jill. So you guys can come on over here. Okay. Pick who's going to be using which piece of equipment. If you'd like to use a robe, would you like to use a robe? Uh, yes. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> it's your choice. Okay. Your choice. So have you two chosen who's going to be the handler and who'll be the going to be the handler. I'll try and be She's the handler. Stepping up. I'll try. Okay. So I, do I just pick one of my animals? Go ahead and pick your okay. animal. Bill, this is your clicker. And try the big guy. <laughs> And I will be the staff person. So Jane will walk up and approach me as the staff person. What break? Oh, the break. The break is on. So Jane is coming into the unit. She's um, checking in at the nurse's station with the staff member that's standing there. She doesn't know me. She's never met me before as a staff member. I don't know anything about why she's here. I don't know anything about the program. So she is working with me on that giving some feedback, trying to explain why she's there. At the same time, we're going to have uh, Jill and Vu walk back and forth or roll back and forth um, as clients that are coming through the hallway. Okay, so Getting in your way or not? Mm -hmm. Just Absolutely. In fact, what might even be better is for you to move over here and cross over in front in this way. Yeah, so you guys are going in different directions. Do it right or like just make them we're looking for pet. <laughs> okay. So Bill's right. going to be your skill spotter. Okay. And he's going to click yeah. when he sees any of the pet. So group, take a mental note of the different things that you're seeing. Take into account the environmental considerations, um, the different distractions, and just watch to see if you see Jane doing pet. Okay. Okay. All right. Come on. Let's go. Whoa. Hi. Why is Hi. there a dog here today? Oh, hi. my name's Jane. I'm actually a Delta Society hi. pet partner. And this is Bernie. What's a pet Bernie partner? Bernie, sit. Good boy. Good boy. What's a pet partner? Um, basically, we, we come in and we're, we're going to be doing some meet and greet. I believe we're going to be meet, meeting uh, Cheryl today. She's the volunteer mm -hmm. coordinator that I'll be meeting with. You know what? Cheryl's out sick today, so I'm filling oh, in for her. Okay. So oh, I... I didn't know you were coming. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. As I said, this is this is Bernie, and uh -huh. um, he actually has gone through some um, training. We've gone through basic training, and also I've gone through handler training. What kind of training? Um, for just coming into facilities like this, coming to meet people and uh -huh. making sure that they um, can mm -hmm. meet Have you guys been in here before? Because I've never seen you. Um, yes, yes, we've been a oh, couple okay. of times. I haven't seen you, but, okay. but yes. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, he's very good. He's very used to it. And good boy, good boy. Okay, so are you looking for a list of patients to go and see I, on yes, the unit? Yes, that's what okay. usually happens. That'll be great. Okay, let me see here. He's so, a good boy, good boy. You know, I really don't know these patients very well because like I said, I'm just filling in today. But um, there's a couple people here that may want to visit. Okay, that'd yeah, be great. That'd so be I can great. give you the list of, of the different people. Okay. Now this guy, um, Joe, he's in isolation, but I think he'd love a visit. Um, if, if that's appropriate, um, he, we, we have actually visited um, a couple of ladies in the, um, uh, the geriatric wing, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure that the, about the protocols. I haven't actually been taken through the procedures. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as long as you Good put on a mask and you gown up, it should be fine. Okay, okay, yes, we, we've got a complex rating, so if that's, that's okay. Yeah, I think that Joe would like it. Um, he's, you know what, he's eating right Good now, boy. but I think that should be fine. I mean, if your dog's been trained, he's probably fine around food, right? Um, he, he is, but if, if it's okay, if we could actually meet him maybe afterwards when he's finished okay. eating, we could okay. meet some other people before okay. then, if that's okay. Yeah, and you is can just, okay, buddy? down the hallway in the, in the linen closet there, there is um, a mask and, you know, gowns, so you can go ahead and do that. You probably want to put gloves on, too. Perfect, yes. Yeah, to and keep the, the germs away. Okay. So that will work. And then I have uh, Susie here, and Susie... You know, Susie's a little afraid of dogs, but it might be really therapeutic for her. If you um, guys go and visit, it might be a really good thing. 
do you want to go and check with Susie first? See how she feels about that. Was it? Do you think? You it's know, I think be you okay? guys can just stop by. Good boy. Yeah, you can just stop by, and if she says okay. no, she says no. But you can try. I will do that then. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay. And then, oh, we have Marsha here. You know, and I think Marsha is really lonely today, so she would probably really love it. Oh, I'm sure Bernie would yeah. love that too. Yeah. Wouldn't you, Bernie? Okay. Oh boy. Well, here you go. I'm taking down some notes here for you, and here's their room numbers. So if you want to go ahead and take this list. Okay, well, thank you. And go and see those people, and then okay. when you're done, come back, and we'll see who else we can find for you to visit. Perfect. Well, thanks. Okay. Nice meeting All you. Right. Okay. Bye. Come on then. Let's go, Bunny. Bye. Thank you. Good meandering. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to be yeah. obnoxious. <laughs> 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 this is a NASCAR? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I know Jill's, Jill's pretty fast in that wheelchair. I'm, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Come on out here, Jane. Oh, okay. So Jane, how was that for you? How was that visiting experience? It it was it was okay. Um, I mean, my understanding sometimes is that the pet partner would normally go through a volunteer coordinate orientation with a facility, so they would actually know some of the um, departments that they could take their animal into and not be allowed. Mm -hmm. So that was I was a little bit apprehensive of not being able to meet the person I usually would meet at the facility. But you were very good. I mean, I felt comfortable, and and uh, Bernie felt comfortable. So, what was most challenging about that situation? Um, it was again everybody coming around at me. I could hear the wheels and everything. If I had an animal, I definitely mm -hmm. would have to really try and concentrate. You know what my animal was doing and the kind of questions that you were, you know, giving to me and how I would answer them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that was probably quite challenging. Anything that was easy. About um, that or felt natural about that situation? I think if it again if it's a facility that you're used to going into and you know the procedures, you know the you know the the site layout, mm -hmm. I think it helps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after you become more familiar mm -hmm. um, again, you know, with the different departments, etc. Okay. <coughs> Group. What was your feedback? I think you kind of forced her to visit people that I don't think you took the necessary steps to see if the people will like the dog to visit them in the first place. And um, other than that, I think she did an excellent job of all these steps here on the wall. What essential skills did you see in Jane and her handling with her dog? A lot of touching, mm -hmm. a lot of eye contact, and her Speech presence sounds. was perfect. Big one, everyone in the Hospital go around the dog, so she tried to make the dog concentrate to her, so the dog will not run around, or, so she tried to touch at the dog. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's with the different healthcare equipment going back and forth, she looked in tune with looking at her dog and watching her dog, because when you have wheels coming and your dog's tail is there, you certainly wouldn't want wheels crossing over your dog's tail or injuring any part of their body, so it what I'm hearing you say is that she was in tune with that. She was close to her dog, so all the distractions that the dog wanted to run away, she was there right with the dog. Okay, okay. Any environmental considerations? I was curious, when, um, like say how they're going around, what if they wanted to stop and pet the dog? Mm -hmm. While she's, mm -hmm. Are they allowed to do that, or what should, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. the two people, and they, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you're trying to talk to her, and the dog's, the people are going around, so I didn't know if, like, you know, because they probably would want to pet it. I mean, they're getting close enough to, right? Mm -hmm. What does everybody think about that? Um, I would actually go back to a kindergarten lesson, as in take your turn. Otherwise, you get mobbed. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, I find that if you put your dog into a sit-stay, uh, it's less intimidating than having your dog stand for some people, especially children. What's a sit-stay? Mm -hmm. Sit and then they stay in place. <laughs> Rachel, I thought you didn't want us to actively pet the dog. That's why I didn't No, you didn't ask. need to. Okay, I thought. You didn't need to. So, um, Jane, what are your thoughts on if you were in a real visiting situation and there's other people passing by and say they did stop and say, I'd love to pet your dog, and you're talking to the staff person, would you let them pet your dog? Um, 
I would basically say what I'm here for, and I would just say, you know, um, he, he's working as a therapy dog at the moment. He's not working as a service dog, but he's working as a therapy dog. And hopefully that would allow people to say, okay, this he, he's not just an animal visiting. He's in there for a purpose, and he's going to be visiting other people in the, mm -hmm. in the hospital. So, again, it would be more, I would be redirecting um, the conversation so between both of us rather than the animal mm -hmm. and the other person. Mm -hmm asking to the, to the people who want to pet the dog, say, I, I'd be happy to let you pet the dog just as soon as I'm done done speaking with uh, with my conversation, I'd be happy to, mm -hmm. to let you pet the dog. Yeah, because in a real visiting situation, you will encounter groups and different people want to come up and pet your dog or your animal. And um, it's really up to you. It's your judgment call to decide if that's a safe situation for you and your animal. But you're, you're not th just there to visit with the patients or the clients on your list. You're also there to visit with staff, with family members, with really anyone who you deem is appropriate for a pet visit. So it would be okay to do that, to stop and say, sure. Or can, can you wait just one moment? Let me finish up. Part of what you're doing as a pet partner is you're constantly multitasking when you're in a visiting situation. So you're very aware of your surroundings and you're very aware of all the different interactions, the safety of your animal, your animal's calming signals. So it's a really a lot to keep track of. But certainly if you thought that that was an appropriate thing to do, you could have done that. Or you could have said, uh, you know, can I, can I uh, visit with you in just one moment, please? Or not right now, you could say that in a nice way. Depends on the situation. No, I thought it was great that when the patient, there was a patient that was uncertain about animals, I think he said, well, why don't you check in with the patient first? But then I wondered, like, infection control, if that's okay to be in isolation. We need to give you a piece of chocolate. I was wondering when I might hear that because I intentionally, as a staff member, was as irresponsible as possible mm -hmm. with telling her to go and visit with somebody in isolation and gown up. As a pet partner, you're never going to visit with somebody in isolation. So you do have to follow the infection control procedures of that facility, and every facility is a little bit different. But as a pet partner, if you ever have to gown up or put gloves on in that way, you're not going to go and visit with that person. So that's a really good, good thing. And then also, I did make note that there was somebody who was really scared of dogs. Would it have been appropriate for her to go and visit with that person? To knock on their door and they didn't know she was coming and they're scared of dogs? What do you think? I think she said an excellent job when she said, make sure to see if the patient will want the dog to come first. Mm -hmm. That was a great way of redirecting that, wasn't it? Of saying, could you check first, that just to make bring, sure. That could bring the patient more dogs. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. The dog comes in. Especially if they're not expecting it. And you already know that they're scared of dogs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I seemed like a very clueless staff member, I thought. That was a bit scary. And again, that's, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, again, the volunteer orientation, I think probably that, that, uh -huh. you know, that would have been covered. But. And that's why, too, we really empower our pet partners to make those decisions, even if a staff member says, oh, you can go ahead and gown up, it would be OK. Perhaps that staff member, like I was role playing, is new or on call or filling in. So perhaps they didn't know that that's not something you could do because they're not familiar with the program. So that's why we really are empower our pet partners to go through those proper protocols with the facility. Make sure you go through the orientation training. Make sure that you know and you understand all the infection control procedures. The very first time I visited um, at a children's hospital with my dog, the very first visit, the nurse who was on call said the same exact thing to me. Well, you can gown up and go and visit with that, that child. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm happy to say hello and have my dog do some tricks from a distance, but we can't go into that room for their safety. So you have to be able to make that call as a pet partner. Good. Let's give a round of applause. Ooh.